How's it going everyone? Welcome to my channel Cyber Hashira. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Hardware Security Module or HSM. I'm sure some of you who are watching this video must have seen me using Luna Cloud HSM. I've used it in some of my videos to generate and store keys. I thought it would be a good idea to introduce HSMs to you all as I use them frequently in my videos and uh, some of the videos that I will be uploading in the future will surely have hardware security module being used in it. So without further delay, let's begin. So the first question, what is a hardware security module? A hardware security module or HSM in short is a device that, uh, that is used for securely generating and storing sensitive keys and it is also used for performing different types of uh, crypto operations. When I say crypto operation, I mean cryptographic operations such as sign, verify, encrypt, decrypt, hash or key exchange or key derivation, things like that. It has nothing to do with cryptocurrencies. These devices can be a USB device or a PCIe device or a network appliance. Nowadays, cloud-based HSMs are quite popular. The one that I use is called Luna Cloud HSM and I will talk about cloud HSMs later in this video. The next question is, what is a hardware security module used for? Well, I have uh, mentioned four points on this slide. So securely generate and store cryptographic keys, perform cryptographic functions, cryptographic accelerations and can be used locally or via network. So these are the four points and I will be explaining each of them one by one. One of the main purpose of using HSM is to generate and store sensitive keys in it. A hardware security module has its own secure memory and a processor. When you generate a private key using key tool or OpenSSL or maybe some other tool, the keys are actually generated and stored on a file system. Now this is a security risk even if those keys are encrypted. However, when you generate a key using HSM, it leaves no digital footprint on your computer. File system is not used at all. So on your computer, there is just a client or a driver that you need to install on your computer and uh, that driver or client will talk to the HSM. Your request to generate a key will be forwarded to the HSM by the client and the HSM would generate that key internally. A good HSM would always have its own RNG, also known as random number generator, which will be used to generate those keys. So everything happens inside HSM. And because those keys exist inside HSM's memory, the risk of keys getting compromised is significantly reduced. HSMs can also process uh, cryptographic functions internally. So it does not matter if you want to sign or encrypt or maybe hash some data. The data is securely passed to the HSM and because those operations are uh, taking place inside HSM, the risk of any sensitive data getting compromised is reduced. Your computer is never going to know what happens to a data once it is sent to the HSM. Another benefit of using HSM is that it can accelerate crypto operations. They have an ASIC which is specially designed to process different types of uh, cryptographic functions. As a result, your HSM delivers better performance. Let me explain how that works. Imagine you need to perform some bulk operation, for example, digitally signing 10,000 documents every hour. Or you may have a web server which is set up with uh, HTTPS uh, and it is serving like hundreds of requests every minute. If HSMs were used, all those requests will be sent to the HSM and HSM would process those requests for that client. This process is also known as offloading. The processor and the RAM of your computer will not be used to perform those tasks, making them free to do or work on some other task. A computer that uses HSM is known as HSM client or just client. HSMs can be used locally as well as remotely. Devices such as USB tokens, USB HSMs, PCIe HSMs are connected to a client locally. Therefore, those HSMs are known as local HSMs. They can be easily connected to your client and removed when not required. Local HSMs are suitable for those use cases where the keys are required for a short period of time. For example, offline root CA, which does not require to be online all the time. 
Then there's network-based HSMs, which can be accessed remotely via network by a client. Network HSMs allows multiple clients to connect to it simultaneously and utilize it. Hardware security modules has some security features to enhance the security of those devices. I've only mentioned seven features, but I'm sure there are more. First, keys are always stored inside HSM's secure memory. A good HSM would always store them in encrypted form. Most HSM these days uses multi-level encryption. That is, the keys and the other objects that are stored inside the HSMs are encrypted multiple times using different types of keys. HSMs use stronger authentication methods. They are not just limited to using passwords. Some HSMs use pin entry devices or PED to enter pins so a user can authenticate. The picture that you see on the screen shows what a PED device looks like. They are connected to the HSM using a proprietary cable and when a login is requested, a user would have to enter a pin to authenticate. Some HSMs use smart cards and USB tokens to authenticate a user. There's also a limit to how many failed login attempts are allowed by a user before they are locked out. And all activities related to login attempts are logged by the HSM internally. Some HSMs, mostly network-based HSMs, uses a lightweight Linux operating system inside. OS used for these HSMs are hardened, which means all unnecessary packages are removed, firewall rules are predefined and they can't be changed, users are never allowed to access a shell, most part of the file systems are marked as read-only, there are no unnecessary services running in the background, and there are many more restrictions applied to the OS just to make sure there aren't any vulnerabilities. A good HSM will have tamper evidence and tamper resistance implemented in it. This is also a security requirement for passing FIPS 140 validation. So if you ever get a chance to use a FIPS validated device, it would most likely have tamper evidence and tamper resistance in it. I will make a separate video explaining FIPS standards sometime in future. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos. Anyways, coming back to the topic. Tamper evidence is a physical security mechanism which is implemented by adding special seals, coating, stickers on the cover or any areas of the HSM that might have chances of physical intrusion. So if someone tries to open the cover or tries to remove the screws or tries to forcefully uh, break into the device, they won't be able to do it without leaving a clear visible evidence. That's what tamper evidence is all about. On the other hand, tamper resistance goes one level further. In addition to tamper evidence, tamper resistance tries to prevent physical intrusion. This includes using very strong enclosure. These enclosures can't be opened once they are closed without actually uh, breaking it. They also use screws that can't be unscrewed or removed. And even after this, if someone successfully breaks into that device, it would immediately trigger a tamper detection response, which would immediately erase everything from the secure memory of, uh, of the HSM. All objects stored in the secure memory are going to be destroyed, and this event is known as zeroization. HSMs are electronic devices. They may have mechanical parts. And although most manufacturers use high quality parts to manufacture HSMs, they can still break. In the event when HSM is dead or has some fault in it, it's obvious all sensitive keys uh, are gone with it. So it's very important to make a backup of those keys. A good HSM would always have a mechanism in place to securely backup those keys. Keys are always encrypted using strong encryption within those backup. These backups can be an encrypted blob file or a hardware device. There are some HSMs that only allow keys to be backed up using another hardware device. For example, it could be a smart card or a backup HSM. The image that you see on the left is Thales Luna backup HSM device. And the image that you see on the right is a smart card reader used for taking a backup. A good HSM would comply to standards such as FIPS, Common Criteria and PCI DSS. A good HSM would have a proper logging mechanism. Every activity is logged 
and based on the event that occurs, security alerts can be generated. Logs can also be used for auditing and debugging purpose. Cloud HSMs are quite popular these days. There are some vendors who offer HSM as a service to their customer. Cloud HSM functions just like an on-premise HSM. The only difference is they are hosted on cloud. Cloud providers are responsible for procuring the HSM hardware and maintaining them. You don't need to buy anything separately. Cloud HSMs can be provisioned on the same network used by your virtual private cloud, which reduces network latency. All you have to do is sign up for their cloud HSM service and pay a monthly fee or maybe pay for the usage. And these are some popular HSM vendors. That's all I have about HSMs in this video. I hope this video helped you understand what HSMs are. Please leave a like if you like this video, post your questions in the comment section and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. See ya.